Hello everybody, welcome to the Gyrocopter Flying Club. In this film, I'll look at flight behind the drag curve, or as many gyrocopter pilots call it, flight behind the power curve. Now some of you may think I've covered this before, and I have, but due to the embarrassment of the copyright holder, my use of his entire film, and the ensuing handbagging session, here is take two. To recap, the film that caused some feathers to ruffle was this one. The link to the full version is in the description, but essentially the film is very misleading and I wanted to highlight things to save others from getting snagged. The aircraft is a Sparrowhawk and you can see that the tailwheel limits pitch attitude during the takeoff roll. The student pilot was poorly briefed, was misdirected by the instructor in flight and the in-cockpit debrief was misleading. You can watch the actual video via the link in the description. However, the student was briefed by the instructor to introduce throttle more slowly during the ground roll so that he could feel the wheel balance element for longer prior to takeoff, no doubt because the aircraft's design promotes a flatter takeoff attitude. Having lifted off the runway, the aircraft starts to dwell in the airspeed build up phase and there begins a dialogue between student and instructor. The instructor asks the student if he sees how high the nose is but the picture out of the window actually doesn't look all that high at the time the question is asked. Indeed, here is that attitude. And because the instructor merely asks, see how high the nose is, without giving a clue as to if it's high or low, then says, are we going to fly? The student increases pitch and pulls the nose even higher. Because the takeoff has been attempted on part throttle, the student also recognises the need to increase power and does so by increasing the throttle. But now the nose really is too high and the instructor finally highlights the need for less pitch, but the aircraft has already sunk back onto the runway. So what's the problem? Well, first of all, I think it highlights the need for a good briefing so that everyone is clear what is required of them in the sortie. Because here, in fairness to the student, he was confused with what he was supposed to be doing. From the gentle power application leading to a part throttle takeoff attempt to a non descriptive pitch attitude prompt from the instructor completing the confusion. It's made even more important because usually flight behind the power curve is accompanied by this graphic showing airspeed and engine RPM to represent power. Indeed, this graphic is from the UK CAA Safety Sense leaflet. Therefore, as we relate it to takeoffs, which is where this flight state is likely to snag you, it is absolutely important to use 100% throttle, because otherwise, not only do you encourage the problem, but you also have no consistent reference. As it relates to the film I used as a poor example, because the pilot hadn't been taught to use full power or reference airspeed for takeoffs, it allowed him to get snagged. Why? Well, aside from the untimely prompts from the instructor around pitch, having got airborne at less than full power, our student was lulled into thinking that the solution to his overpitching was to add more power without cross-referencing airspeed. Had he done so, his likely response would have been to lower the nose and the situation would have been successfully recovered. And that's because... In basic flight training, students are taught that it's pitch that controls airspeed. Fly safely.